One group hopes to update an athletic field at Barnstable High School. The Cape Cod Commission is updating its regional policy plan and find out what's on the agenda for tonight's town council meeting. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Thursday, January 22nd, 2015. I'm Sarah Mannell. committee discusses a proposal that calls for a new multi-purpose athletic field at Barnstable High School. The plan was altered from an, in, an initial proposal calling for a baseball field to now allow for other sports as well. Facilities Director Dave Kenyok described the changes during a school committee workshop last uh, night. What we've done is we've, we've featured the new uh, field is featured uh, has the following features. It will have a lighted varsity baseball field with a 300 by 195 rectangular multi-purpose field with 10 foot safe zones uh, all around and that will be in synthetic turf. Uh, it, it will include spectator stands and a press box uh, that will have capacity for 380 people. Uh, we'll have a restroom and concession building. Uh, we will include additional parking spaces, uh, two bullpens and a batting cage. Uh, we'll start on an 8 by 8 and 10 foot paved walkway infrastructure which will uh, traverse the entire uh, athletic complex at the high school, uh, stormwater control, and then there's an option there for an additional 200 spectator stands on the baselines if, if so de desired. More next one, Scott. Thank you. Uh, just a quick look at the, at the um, cost. Uh, just uh, these are the major costs. Site preparation would be about $84,000 for this. Uh, the artificial turf field itself is about 1.6 million. Site improvements, uh, uh, that would be all the excavation work, would be 330. Restroom concession buildings around 400,000. Lighting is 400,000. Uh, and then we're carrying 8% uh, for O&P overhead and profit, which is 229. We have a 15% contingency in there, which is very normal uh, this early in the in the planning stages and then uh, design survey and, and all the construction administrative costs around $348,000 uh, for a total of $3.9 million uh, is the estimate. And again, it's a it's very conservative estimate. Uh, we've got it very high on contingencies and, uh, and overhead and profit right now. The project is still in the planning stage and School Committee Chair Margo Weber says organizers would need to raise a significant amount of money to help pay for the project. The Cape Cod Commission is updating its regional policy plan. Executive Director Paul Nidzwicki says it's a process the organization goes through every five years. The regional policy plan seeks to align those regional goals with the local goals. And it generally does this through uh, what's called the local comprehensive plan. So the towns in the past have worked on these local comprehensive plans or these LCPs. And uh, then those LCPs are reviewed by the commission and the commission deems whether they are consistent or not. We're looking to radically change that approach this time. Uh, often in the past, those LCPs have, have become these ponderous narratives that take a long time to put together and uh, aren't really user friendly, so they aren't often used. We're looking to simplify the definition of the LCP to come up with broader uh, categories of definitions for things like zoning so that local zoning ordinances can then be grouped in these larger regional categories. And we're really looking to go to more of a map-based approach, something mm -hmm. that people can understand when they look at. Okay, these six zo local zoning ordinances fit in this larger regional category. So that's an important distinction. It's Wiki says he expects the regional policy plan to be sent to the Assembly of Delegates and to county, county commissioners for adoption in June. Town Council meets tonight. Barnstable this morning host Sarah Colvin sat down with Town Council President Jessica rapp Grissetti to find out what's on the agenda. So a relatively short agenda um, on tap for tonight, but of course a, a big joint workshop as well. So why don't you uh, start by telling me a little bit about what uh, what the, will we have under the orders of the day for, for tonight? Um, well, the, first off, as you said, the joint workshop is um, part of the uh, annual budget proce process uh, in January. The school committee comes uh, and sits with the, the council and we'll be hearing from Mark Milne um, and he'll be giving us a financial forecast for FY. 16. And uh, that kind of sets the tone for um, wh what we have in our coffers for expenditures um, with regards to the schools and the town. And, uh, and it also uh, um, highlights the uh, 
um, the collaboration between the schools and the town and how closely we work uh, uh, hand in hand. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to hearing that presentation. Absolutely, and, and, and Barnesville really is uh, quite unique in the way in which we do work with the schools so collaboratively, and it's always an interesting presentation, and it kind of signifies the start of the, the real budget season and the budget discussions in front of town council. That's right. You know, it won't be long before we'll be uh, be presented with the budget. So. Um, and, of course, uh, the uh, um, 005, which is old business, and uh and this is old business that's been carried on since October. It was initially presented to us <laughs> back in, in uh, uh, August of 2014. And that's the uh, approval of the change in care and custody management of the two parcels of land, and one being um, what's known as the uh, um, the shooting range, and the other Breeds Hill. Those are the two parcels. And this is uh, th this uh, as we've. We've gone over um, a couple of times um, after the Conservation Commission, who uh, presently holds the shooting range land in conservation, after they voted by two-thirds vote, a positive vote, to remove that said parcel from their um, purview uh, and jurisdiction and put it into municipal um, hands, uh, it needs then to go to the council for a vote. Indeed. And, and and I think that the important thing to note is this uh, does not in, in really in any way signify that the, the shooting range will reopen anytime soon, but this is just a step uh, as, as part of that whole larger process. Absolutely, it, it is. And uh, um, and this if this is a positive vote, and, and this vote requires a two-thirds vote of the council, uh, then the next item, 006, is uh, the petition uh, to the General Court of Commonwealth. Uh, to uh, to change this the, the the who controls this parcel of land, and uh, we've we've had the state on on board and and uh, guiding us through this process and uh, and uh, I, I think we're ready to uh, to take a vote on this um, on on this and then as you said, um, if this is a positive vote. And it becomes municipal land. Then uh, the steps to reopen the shooting range uh, don't happen right away, but there are steps involved in that. And of course, we can't do anything until the state rolls uh, um, in a positive um, motion for us to hold the land in municipal, because uh, if there is to be a shooting range, can't be held under conservation for that purpose. Absolutely. And so, after those items, there are a couple of reappointments to boards, committees, and commissions. That's right. And, and uh, let me just back up to Sarah. Um, this is not a public hearing on these items. Um, if the public wishes to speak on these items, they need to do so during the public comment period at the beginning of the meeting. And uh, I certainly welcome uh, um, comments on our agenda comment form online as well. So. Indeed. Uh, and there is the, the, the public hearing as well on the appropriation order of $40,000 for uh, the Stewart's Creek Culvert and Estuary, correct? That's right. And I expect we'll probably um, have some, some of the neighbors um, speaking to that item. Uh, and this is for consulting uh, and engineering services uh, to look at the, the, uh, um, the culvert that was recently installed there. And uh, there's some concern that it's not working properly and there's some mud flat developing. And um, this is just to, uh, to bring uh, a, a third party in to, to uh, take a look at the engineering with regards to that project. Exactly, to examine it <clears throat> and ensure that the, the work was indeed done properly. Jessica, anything else about tonight's meeting uh, that you feel our, our viewers should be aware of? Well, the, the last item is the loan order rescissions, um, and, and this is uh, these are unissued loan authorizations all the way back from uh, 2000. Uh, loans that were authorized by council and uh, um, have not been uh, expended. So we want to get those off the book, and uh, I'm sure Mark Milne will be presenting uh, um, that item. So. And town council meets tonight at 7 in the town hall hearing room. That meeting will air live right here on Channel 18. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable, this morning weekdays at 7 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will have our weekly arts and culture segment. We'll learn about a new boat building class for 6th and 7th graders, and we'll have all the latest news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.